There are some amazing games you may have missed, and it's not your fault. You have responsibilities, other games you're playing, and a short attention span. I have a few games you may be interested in that aren't AAA, but rival those same $70 games often at a fraction of the price. Saving the best for last doesn't mean I can't start strong. If you absolutely love Souls Likes, or maybe have never even tried one, I have just one thing to say to you. Another crab's treasure. If you're unfamiliar with Souls Likes, think games like Elden Ring. Only you're a crab with a fork, and swappable shells that give you different stats, passive like abilities, and magic. This game was originally shown at an Indie World Showcase from Nintendo. They dropped a demo and from there gained a lot of hype, but you still may have missed it. And that's a shame because it's one of the most well-received games in its release year and has even sprouted a dedicated speedrunning community solidifying its longevity. See, even what the hype a vocal community can make, casuals and oftentimes hardcore gamers as well can still miss games. Games marketing is a beast and without huge budgets from story franchises, genuine hype, or everyone's favorite, controversy. You may never hear about a game. Also, social media is an echo chamber. What you interact with is what you'll continue to see since that's what these sites want. You mainly interact with Call of Duty and X Defiant, that's what you're gonna get. Any devs put in a lot of work to get their game seen and later in this video, I'll go over a game that may have pissed some of his fans off trying to do just that. Another Crab's Treasure is super challenging, I can't lie, but I know a lot of you out there love hard games. The game starts with the main character Krill getting his home repossessed. It's kind of funny, but also kind of sad. The new monarch of his particular part of the sea has raised taxes and since he couldn't afford them he had his home taken i will say one of the things indie games do well is that they go outside the comfort zone a lot of triple a games won't think of your typical souls like there's a story but it's not cute comical or easily digestible like the aggro crab any team was able to do. This game has the prototypical Souls-like elements such as extremely difficult action-based combat, but what makes it appealing is the writing, the characters, the colorful world, and the sea puns. Indie games mostly offer what people are looking for in gaming minus a bit of polish and graphical fidelity, but we rarely get both of those in a $70 release day one anyway. Indie games offer a great memorable time. This game was crafted with love and care from each dodge roll to every slash of your weapon. If you're a fan of gaming, it's hard to hate any games like this, but it is easy to miss. These small budgeted but big personality games are competing with a Final Fantasy, a Sturtle Blade, a Paper Mario, their fan bases, and often doing it all in the same month. Again, I don't blame you. I'm here to educate you. And this next game had an even smaller budget, smaller buzz, and controversy that really didn't work out in its favor. Despite all that, it's a great game, and I brought a friend along to tell you all about it. What's going on, everybody? My name is FlyGuyGBG, and my boy Sayran hit me up and said, yo, we gotta tell him about Tales of Kinzara Zhao. So that's what I'm here for. Zhao starts off as a young man that is grieving the loss of his father. Simple enough. He becomes a shaman, but even as a shaman, he feels like he still needs help because he is grieving the loss of his father. So he makes a deal with the god of death in order to try to bring back his dad to life because he doesn't feel like he can live without his baba. So he ends up getting two masks, one that represents the moon, one that represents the sun, and they both have two different power sets. And as you go throughout the story, you are able to level up both power sets via a skill tree for both combat and moving throughout terrain. For example, you're able to freeze waterfalls in order to wall jump to freely move through certain terrains. Whether it's fighting a boss battle or multiple enemies, the combat feels very fluid and you're able to unlock more combos as you progress throughout the story. For the overall presentation of the game, I would say it's very good. There are certain things that I really don't like. For example, I don't really like how they handle cutscenes. However, just because I don't like it doesn't mean I don't understand why they would try that cutscene design. I think it actually works for the game. I just personally wish they kind of did a little bit more when it came to cutscenes because personally, even though this is a Metroidvania style game, I really feel like the visuals on this game are beautiful. It is nice and vibrant and very colorful. It's very eye-catching and when they actually zoom into the character, you can see all of that. And I'm pretty new to the Metroidvania genre. I actually started with Prince of Persia and that was like my first game that I enjoyed with this kind of playstyle. The one thing that Prince of Persia does that I like a little bit more than on this game is they put more enemies in front of you. This game doesn't have as many enemies, but at the same time, it could be the level of difficulty I'm playing at. And if I'm being honest, I probably shouldn't go any higher than the level that I'm at because I keep dying. Remember, I'm, I'm new to the genre, so, you know, yeah. All in all, I can't really say what I think is negative about the game. What I can say is I do think 
everybody should try this game out. If you have it already, you should definitely try it out. But again, my name is FlyGuyGBG. Say it ran, back to you. The best, most missed game on this very short list is Hades 2. This game, oh my God. So we all know about Hades, a smash hit in 2020 that won a multitude of awards, including Game of the Year at GDC. Well, Supergiant Games have done it again with their sequel, Hades 2, starring Melina Wee, Zagreus' younger sister. She's trying to defeat the Titan Kronos with her dark sorcery and save her underworld friends. It's a roguelike, so every run, as they're called, is unique with different power-ups and skills that you may have never seen before. The goal is to get as far as you can each run, and eventually by leveling up more permanent aspects of your character, you'll be strong enough to beat the game. Sound familiar? Well, AAA powerhouse God of War took inspiration from this genre in their DLC, God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. This is a roguelike mode that was inspired by a genre that many would relegate to the indie scene. It's amazing because what Hades and other roguelikes do so well, God of War was able to mimic. For a AAA game to take inspiration and step outside of the normal bounds for a free DLC just goes to show how amazing these games actually are. Hades and Hades 2 offer great visuals, an amazing and captivating story, and the one thing I hear gamers everywhere asking for, replayability. Since the levels are randomized and each weapon pairs differently with the many, many power-ups, it's easy to replay the game over and over. You may have liked using male staff for the mid to long range magic, but after realizing the sickles were more fun, you may go back and beat the entire game again with those. The combat is fun, unique, and engaging, and the narrative isn't drawn out either. I've said it a million times, I'm not a big narrative guy. Tell me the story you want to tell me through gameplay, though I don't mind a cutscene here and there. The backstory of these characters is captivating, and again, I find myself falling in love with Mel like I did with Zagreus. That's the beauty in games like this, where the passion is allowed to shine through, instead of being stifled by corporate bureaucracy. The ugliness in games like this is that they have to jump through a few more hoops to get what they need for their game to be successful, albeit money, attention, players, etc. One of the things Hades 2 had to do at its launch is early access, which some have oversimplified to paying to play a broken game early. Early access can be somewhat of a scapegoat. Games like Power World were in early access for months, giving us a feature depleted and extremely buggy game. Same with multiverses and how they pulled their game down for almost a full year after taking people's money while they made some improvements to the game. This can feel scammy to some gamers as we're giving you money that we worked for for incomplete games. But we also know if we don't support these smaller devs, then it could be that much harder for the game to hit full release. At the beginning of this video, I said I just wanted to educate you, but there are so many games out there outside of your comfort zone that you may end up falling in love with, like Astro Duel, Little Lands, and Coromon. Games you've likely never heard of that are extremely fun. You have to know where to look, and while I'm glad I can point you in the right direction, the job's not done. Games like Plucky Squire are at the top of my most anticipated. I know they're going to be a passion project full of everything I personally like about gaming, as opposed to the newest NCAA or 2K that's inevitably going to piss people off via microtransactions, common sense errors, and some sort of DLC add-on that could have been left in the base game. You have to make a conscious decision with what you support and where your money goes. Gaming is still fun, you just have to know where to look.